Yeah, okay. So welcome everyone. I'm Nicolas Perté. I will talk today about a topic that I think is relevant for many people, but more specifically in developing country, which is USD over lightning. So there is about 200 slides. I will go through them you know, fairly quickly. If you, um, I'm not sure there is a way to for people to ask questions, but um, uh, assuming there is, you know, feel free to uh, to ask questions while I'm doing. Uh, I'm going over the presentation. Uh, after this presentation, that will last 45 minutes. There is a live tutorial that Arvin will go through. Arvin is also on our team to explain you how to use our API to go uh, to, to use a, a USD wallet that is compatible uh, with Lightning. All right, so the so agenda today, uh, so for the next uh, 40, 40 minutes or so now, so just an introduction about Gala in Beacon Beach, um, then why does USD over Lightning make sense? Uh, small data on stable coins, and then we'll go over the different way to make USD wallets over Lightning, and then the demo time. So introduction, Gala is a free and open source uh, company. We focus on adoption of Bitcoin. We currently have a team of 17 uh, across uh, the, the world. And we, our business is to offer on top of our open source software and blocking and service uh, for the clients that uh, will benefit from it. And our first proof of concept that is probably our most known uh, product out there is a Bitcoin Beach wallet. So before going to the wallet, what is Bitcoin Beach? Bitcoin Beach is an initiative that started probably more than 10 years ago now in, in El Salvador, in El Zante, it's a small village, which is alongside the ocean. And the idea is that uh, there were not a lot of opportunity for youth living there, not a lot of education. And so people like Mike Peterson and Jorge and Chimbera, um, were encouraging to build some activities so that your youth have, have more opportunity as they are growing up. About three years ago now, there was uh, addition of Bitcoin in this uh, youth program. Um, this is also where we at Gallery start to participate in this uh, program to develop a wallet for them. So from Bitcoin Beach, we have the Bitcoin Beach wallet, which is um, an a mobile application. Many uh, mobile applications, you also have some uh, web wallets associated to it. So here there is a few screenshots. You can see this wallet as a way to send and receive Bitcoin. There is also a notion of username. Uh, there is some quiz, the third screen, uh, which is if you answer a few questions educational about Bitcoin, you get a few sets. And there is also a map which uh, has been critical for the adoption of Bitcoin in the country. So uh, a few things about more technical detail about the Bitcoin Beach wallet. It's um, uh, so you can send and receive both on chain and on Lightning. It's uh, it's over a custodial wallet. There is something we can do which is shared custody, meaning the fund can be uh, put in a multi sync where different key holder can be spread around the community. Um, the the key aspect here is we try it's it's really a wallet for people that doesn't know much about Bitcoin. So we try to abstract the notion of, of balance between um, basically you have a single balance, right? And you can send and receive over either Bitcoin or on chain or Intraledger. Intraledger is the idea that if I have a Bitcoin Beach wallet, you have a Bitcoin Beach wallet. So there is no reason to use either Lightning or on chain. Uh, we can just settle within um, it's, it's a database entry. We have a, a backend that is relying on Kubernetes and um, double entry accounting. Um, and we have also some relevant feature, shared custody. I, I talk about it quickly. We also have uh, the notion of synthetic USD, which is a key topic of this uh, presentation. So, USD over Lightning, why does it even make sense? Um, so, the experience that I had with uh, Bitcoin Beach Wallet was very interesting. So when we start working with this community in uh, early 2020, the, the very first version of the wallet was just, there was no dollar whatsoever in the wallet. It was only only using a Bitcoin as a unit of account. Oh, it, it may have been set already from the beginning. Um, 
but the main idea is that um, the, 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 the people using the wallet in the Zante, like they pay everything in dollar. It's a, uh, El Salvador is a dollarized country. And therefore, they pay for the coffee for you know, two dollars. Um, uh, they don't know how much size this is. And so the, the, the first learning that we get is that, okay, we need to add dollar in the wallet. Like, uh, it's not dollar as a, you know, I save in dollar. It's a, it's a dollar as like, um, uh, when I send a payment, you know, I need a conversion of depending on the current price from sats to dollars so that I can send the correct amount of, of sats to pay whatever I need to pay. Um, and the idea is that, you know, in, in the coming future, like it will stay the same way. So we, we really need to add dollar in the, in the wallet. If you think about it, you know, the store value is sats, meaning I, I, when my wallet is uh, offline, like I'm, I'm receiving sats and um, it, it's, uh, if the price from dollar to Bitcoin change, uh, of course the equivalent amount of dollar I have is changing. Um, the medium of exchange also that we were using is SATS, but the unit of account, we really move from SATS to, to the law. Um, the second aspect that we you know, quickly learn, and as, uh, I think most people in the Bitcoin space are aware, is the volatility of Bitcoin. The, you know, the story goes as follows. You, you onboard the merchant, they receive $500 because there is a group of Bitcoiners in, uh, in the village. Um, we are maybe May 2021st. And next month, right, they open their wallet and, okay, they now have $300, right? And they think uh, Bitcoin is a scam or something like that. <laughs> but, you know, the reality is just that, um, you know, this merchant maybe didn't grasp the fact that um, she is receiving a dollar, but she receiving you receive it at the one time, then you have a need. Maybe you're planning on the time to, to, to business, and you cannot pay for it, and that's not uh, great. The, you know, the learning here is that if you are spending in one currency and selling in another currency, and the, there is a fluctuation, then you, you, you may not have enough money to pay for your uh, obligation, which is uh, obviously a big issue. Um, you know, if, if you have extra income and you can afford the price volatility, like obviously storing Bitcoin is great, but most people in, in El Salvador are living paycheck to paycheck and therefore they can't really afford the volatility of Bitcoin until they start to have saving. Um, all right, so maybe a, a small detour on uh, thinking about Bitcoin the assets and Bitcoin the network. So, um, if you think about Bitcoin the assets, it's um, an asset that is limited to 21 million Bitcoin, um, which is really what makes uh, Bitcoin valuable. And in the monetization phase, we can uh, we should embrace the volatility, right? The fact that there is this big swing up and down is part of the monet monetization process of, of Bitcoin. Um, but not everyone can afford the full exposure to Bitcoin the assets. Now you have Bitcoin the network, which is related, but a uh, difference. The idea of Bitcoin the network is that you can send money from two different parties uh, without intermediaries. Um, before the Lightning Network, right, uh, Bitcoin is extremely secure, um, but the drawback is uh, that it, it doesn't work very well for um, you know day-to-day -day payments, like if you want to pay for a coffee, like the 10 minute confirmation time that may end up being one day, like it's, it's not very, very good. And obviously if we start to put every transaction that every human being and every maybe machine is doing on the blockchain, we will have some issue with um, fees and, and um, scalability. But Lightning changed the notion of Bitcoin the network to something that suddenly is, is very secure, but also provide instant settlements and is very scalable, right? And so Bitcoin, the network, have this unique property that we want to embrace. And the key insight here is that you can, you, you may want to still maybe keep your, your store value in dollar, like if you have X once in dollar, but you may want to use 
continue to use the, the Lightning Network um, because of this uh, particular property that make it uh, just uh, the, the best payment network we can think of to transfer value. Um, and, and probably here a key highlight is the instant settlement, right? Is really that we go from um, some uh, like Bitcoin layer one is not instant and it's it make it very hard because it's not instant to think about uh, price volatility. But as soon as it becomes instant, it's very easy to edge and therefore it's very easy to, at least much easier to offer USD based wallet uh, using like. All right, so Bitcoin the assets versus Bitcoin the network. Um, the idea is that there is a, a very steep learning curve to understand Bitcoin the assets. Uh, why is that? It's the main reason is because to really understand Bitcoin as you know the cap on 21 million Bitcoin, you need to understand what money is, you need to understand what the fiat system is. Um, it's uh, it depends on your level of financial education, but it takes time to really understand this. Um, le, the, on the using Bitcoin the network, like the education is not as steep because the idea is that you can show someone a wallet and you send money from one party to another one. Um, it's you know maybe it's like a PayPal or Venmo or a Cash App. It just works and people could start from with it with a mature education uh, hurdle. And maybe the idea is that okay, you start using Bitcoin the network and over time you start uh, migrating from keeping money in a, in a fiat equivalent to maybe a Bitcoin equivalent. So fiat option provides smooth onboarding to Bitcoin. This is basically what I was uh, explaining. Um, user no USD, right? Like this is what they use day to day. Um, if they use Bitcoin the network, but not yet Bitcoin the asset, they could move it, uh, move, uh, move to it over time. Um, and here's a, you know, if I sum up on the same table I used before, so the idea is before we move unit of account from SAT to USD, uh, no, the idea is to move the store value from also SAT to USD, but still keep the medium of exchange uh, as SATs. All right, a small detail on stable coin that I think is relevant because if we think about like this, you know, uh, store value, medium of exchange, unit of account, like <laughs> why not using medium of exchange also as USD, right? Like then the problem is solved uh, to some extent. Um, but there is some reason to not use stablecoin, which I'm going to go into. The pros here first is that uh, stablecoin are digital, so it's much better than maybe cash to some extent. Um, there is maybe not the privacy aspect to this, but otherwise the fact that it's digital is very useful. Uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, and, and of course, stablecoin are becoming very popular. Uh, you know, we have, um, I don't know, 150 million or maybe even more, uh, maybe close to 200 billion dollars in stablecoin today. Uh, we see there is a, a market for it, right? Uh, but here is a problem with stablecoin. Uh, first is interoperability. So if Ali wants to do a fundraiser, for instance, and she wants to collect money, um, you know, Bob said, okay, we're in. Um, Maybe Bob will say, okay, I'll use USDC over his. Um, um, Carl, uh, Carla will say, okay, I have USDC over Tron. And oh, you know, uh, maybe at least you want to use Solana, right? And so basically, the issue with stablecoin is there is no really shilling point about which stablecoin use or which protocol to use. Another point with um, which is related with stablecoin is a high fees, right? So maybe you start, you think about USDT, they start with Bitcoin um, Omni, but then the fees on Bitcoin become very expensive. So it's moved to um, to Ethereum. So uh, how do you accept USDC? Yes, so I accept USDC over Ethereum. And, and maybe because the fee on Ethereum are too high, you know, then the uh, there is a, a way to the bottom where you go to a network that is supposedly more scalable, but is, uh, is also, you know, less secure. Um, so, you know, the story goes like this. You start with Omni, um, uh, ETH is cheaper, and maybe you move to Tor, to Tron because it's cheaper, and 
Um, and then you end up with like a network that is totally not secure, right? Um, all right, so why not use stablecoin is because uh, first there is no sharing point on which protocol to use, which stablecoin to use. There is high fees and also it's typically not as instant as lightning. So let's go to the main topic, which is USD over lightning. So how does this work? So Alice wants to buy a coffee from Bob. And so Bob provides a coffee, Alice wants to pay, and she will be paying high dollar, right? The, the way most wallet today will work is Bob wants to request five dollar from his lightning wallet. Um, and so he's open his wallet, he tapped five dollar. The wallet internally look at, okay, the current Bitcoin price is X. And so this will be, you know, that amount of sets. And so let's say the current price is 40K. Um, it will be 12,500 sets, right? So here we come back to the example that I described initially on what we have for the Bitcoin Beach wallet is the store value reset, the medium of exchange reset, the units of account is USD. Okay, here we have Bitcoin price exposure, right? Uh, Alice can do invoice and 12,500 sets and Alice pays the invoice. And in that case, both Alice and Bob hold Bitcoin. And if the price of Bitcoin change, you know, the equivalent amount of dollars they have is changing. So if you want to have optional Bitcoin exposure and maybe a store value in USD, the way this will work is now, so Bob will create an invoice for $5. Um, so Alice for $5 in her USD wallet. Uh, Bob shows the same QR code. And the key difference is that when Alice click pays and wallet, so Alice have to have a way to have USD somewhere. And, and we're going into the detail about how, but she have to have five dollar somehow in a wallet. And when she click pay to pay for Bob, the, what the wallet will do is is converting the dollar to Bitcoin at the current fee rate, and then sets are being sent to Bob. But here there is a critical additional step, which is a conversion from USD to, to Bitcoin at the time of payment. And when Bob receives the uh, sets, um, so Alice sends sets over lightning to Bob, and then Bob receives BTC over lightning. And if Bob also wants to keep USD, Bob will do the inverse operation. Bob receives BTC, and there is a conversion to USD that is done by the wallet of Bob. Okay, so there is different way to offer USD over wallets, and. Here, the subtitle is what if Lightning was the shilling point? The idea is that Lightning is the best payment protocol. I think there is. And so instead of using all these different protocols for you know, stablecoin and different um, yeah, blockchain protocol, you know, let's maybe use Lightning as a payment medium. Um, OK, so the four, the, the four different um, way to offer USD for Lightning is you can rank them as a scale of trust, maybe from the the most trusted solution to the less trusted solution. So probably the first option would be I can have USD in a bank account. Um, typically, it would be what we call an omnibus account, and in that case, you know, you want to. Uh, yeah, I, I go into the detail later, but this is the first option. Second option is use of stablecoin. Third option is use of derivatives, and fourth option is use of DXC. And, and there is really a scale of trust here. You know, the, the USD over a bank account is most trusted, maybe where there is more, most regulatory burden. DXC is some uh, highlight here. It's not necessarily comprehensive. There is Thing like alt, which I'm not the most familiar with, that is also other way to think about bringing USD over lightning. Okay, so how does USD in bank account work? Um, the idea is that you need first you need a bank account, and so there is a very high regulatory burden here because 
if you are a wallet provider, you need to find a bank that is okay to give you like a, an omnibus account with an APN access. And you also need to have a, a fiat uh, spot exchange, typically with a pair USD to, to BTC. So the pros of this solution is very safe. It's um, you have connection with the legacy banking system, so you can offer your, your maybe customer ACH or Fedwire. The cons is that for a startup to get an uh, omnibus account is a very uh, high barrier to entry. And you, the reason is that you need to get a charter. Uh, the bank need a, a, a charter. And if they work with fintech company startups that have wallet, they are applying the same regulatory compliance that they will do themselves, which means a lot of KYC procedure and email procedure. And so this is uh, this is challenging for a startup to, to do. There is also the fact that counterparty um, risk, you know, the bank are not necessarily safe. You know, sometimes they fail, and so you it's overall fairly fairly safe, but it's not necessarily a fail-proof option. Bank fails sometimes uh, from time to time. Um, also, the last point is that the yield that uh, bank is generating on the deposit is uh, typically only kept by the bank nowadays. Uh, I just need to plug my computer before I run out of battery. Yeah, okay. Um, so USD in the bank account, the money flow will look like this. There is hundred dollar that is sent from the from a bank account to an exchange. So you know on the exchange you will uh, you will sell the dollar by the sets, and then you will send this to a lightning wallet. Um, from the lightning wallet, you can do the payments. Um, this is, if, if you want to think about it, maybe this is a model that Swag is using in the US or Bottle Pay in the UK. Um, this is how they operate, to my understanding. Uh, you can also think about maybe merchants like uh, OpenNode or Ibex Mercado, like they will do the uh, same flow but in opposite. They will receive sets over lightning and then they will send us fund to a spot exchange to sell the Bitcoin and buy the USD and then send it to um, to the merchant. All right, the second option is stablecoin. Um, so here there is a bit um, less, I guess, regulatory burden because it's easier to get a USDT wallet versus a USD account. Um, so the pros is it's much easier to access than USD. Um, anyone can create a USD wallet with a smartphone, right? You just need a, eventually a random number to, to have a wallet. Um, there is some cons relative to the solution is that uh, third party, uh, the third counterparty risk uh, with a coin issuer may be higher than maybe the money in a bank account. You also, if you offer a stable coin solution, you can't uh, transfer to your bank account and maybe for some business this is useful for every business that rely on legacy payment. Uh, you also typically don't get a yield, the yield is being, uh, there is some yield generated on those dollar but they are being kept by the stable issuer. So the flow of money here will look like this uh, if you are sending money so the, no you don't have no dollar in a bank account but in a crypto wallet and you will send it to a crypto exchange. Um, if here you will convert the dollar to sets, um, then the sets will be in the Lightning Wallet and you can send it to a Lightning. Uh, to my best of knowledge, this is a model that Strike is doing in Argentina. At least based on uh, some yeah, public tweet that I have seen. Um, third option, maybe a bit more creative, is the use of derivatives. Um, so here you have less trust than the previous one because you just require crypto derivative exchanges. The pros of this solution is you, if you're familiar with something called the cash and carry trade, the idea is that you are long in your Bitcoin wallet and you have a short position on the derivative exchange. You get on average over the last six months, 6.5% annualized it was last year, you get 18% uh, interest, which is non-significant. Uh, so it means, you know, if you offer this to your client and you have a, a million dollar, 
um, you know, over a year, you would have 180k in, I guess, uh, arbitrage um, for this uh, cache and carry trade. You only need to rely on the on the derivative exchange, which can be offshore. You know, not, it doesn't have to be the US, for instance, which uh, make it an appealing option, uh, an appealing option for a lot of uh, wallet that may want to offer local solution on, uh, you know, in, 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 in country where there is um, maybe not much uh, banking access. And so it's a, it's a complete option for many, uh, many projects. The cons is that the, um, the, the yield that I mentioned about, you know, 6.5 or 18% over the last 12 months is, the, the yield is very volatile and depend on the market condition. If we are in an excellent bear market, the yield can be negative, which means that uh, we can lose money on our deposits. Um, there is also the fact that you need to have this trade that is ongoing on the exchange and you may have exchange risk, you know, whether the exchange can be act or maybe seize the fund. There is also some liquidity risk um, if the market condition is changing or if some of the clients that want to convert USD for BTC in large sum, um, it's, uh, you know, there may be some slippage. Um, and overall, it's, um, so it's more complex, um, the use of derivative, so it's, uh, it takes more, more time to implement than uh, you know, the use of stablecoin or the use of physical USD dollar. And lastly, you can't transfer to your bank account. Um, so I said we have a demo after. Uh, the demo that we have is actually uh, using derivatives. So um, yeah, this is what we use to provide USD over our wallet. So the way the money flow in that case is a bit more involved than the case of USD or USDT and is go like this. So the wallet, uh, the Lightning wallet, let's say you have 200,000 uh, sets that you want to hedge and convert from sets to USD effectively. So you will need to send maybe 100k sets to the derivative exchange. The next step is to, on the derivative exchange, to uh, short sell maybe 200k sets. So if you have 100k sets on the exchange, you want to use a 2x leverage. And next, if there is a payment, so when let's say someone wants to buy some goods for 50,000 sets, then the wallet will send this money and the position on the derivative exchange will be reduced by 50k so that the amount of dollar that is being edged is uh, is um, is is now 150 k sets because this is the amount of the uh, money in the wallet. So lastly, uh, probably the most self sovereign way of having USD over Lightning is the use of uh, DLC. So DLC stands for discrete lock, uh, discrete lock contract. Um, here we are talking about a particular type of DLC, which is called the DLC FD. Uh, FD for meaning means for difference. And the construction of this uh, contract is actually very similar to the derivative uh, option that I showed just before. The, the requirement for it is you need a, a counterparty that want to be leveraged long BTC to USD because the position that we want to take to get a synthetic USD is always a short position, right? So we need to find someone that wants to be leveraged long effectively. And to make this uh, synthetic USD possible also, we need a trust for C Oracle. So the pros of this solution is that this is the most sovereign uh, individual option. And uh, there may be yield by doing this type of uh, contract, but it's not clear yet uh, how the yield market will develop. Um, the cons are there is some oracle risk, there is some liquidation risk, also um, complex smart contracts. Um, you also may need to do over cover over collateralization. And lastly, uh, to my knowledge, there is no solution in the field that implements this solution. 
and it might take a few years before we, we get there. Uh, DLC are not where uh, Lightning is, you know, we are more at the stage of uh, workless uh, DLC today. So it might take some, maybe four years before it is the stage of maturity of where Lightning is. Um, yeah, and there is also the notion of, is there, uh, will there be enough liquid market to enter close position uh, when the, there is a, a, an implementation in the world? So the story got like this for DLCFD, so very similar to uh, the, the use of derivative. The Lightning Wallet will send 200 k sets to a peer. And uh, no, sorry. Uh, no, the first step is find a peer. Uh, so there is a, you want to find a peer that want to go the bridge long. Um, when you find this peer, you send the, uh, you know, equivalent amount that you want to fetch to uh, to a non-chain or lightning contract, you create this DLC contract that is very similar to a lightning contract. And now if you want to pay something from your easy wallet, you need to, uh, so you can do your 50k payment as before, but now you need to update your contract with your DLC pair. And so this is very theoretic today. As I said before, there is no implementation today for this um, type of contract. So if I do a summary um, of the different options, uh, here we have four, um, four different rows. Uh, we have dollar, USDT, derivative, and DLC, FD. Um, the first column is where is the trust? So for dollar, we trust a bank. For USDT, we trust an issuer. For derivative, we trust an exchange. And for DLT, DLCFD, we trust an oracle, mainly. Um, the second column is, is uh, maybe the regulatory dependence, we can think like this. So to get access to a bank account, the regulatory burden is extremely high. For USDT, it's lower, but it's still high because you Eventually, the issuer also need access to a bank account, typically. Um, for derivative exchange, the regulatory is lower because you can have exchanges that are offshore. And for DLCF, DLCFD, the regulatory burden is extremely low. In terms of fees, so the fees for bank account is high because all this regulatory burden typically are there is some fees that are passed on the clients and it go from high to the lowest for derivative on DLCFD. So uh, point on yield, yield is typically not shared if you have a USD or, or USDT, but it's, it can be uh, high for the construct of uh, synthetic USD with derivatives and it can be on average more than 10% per year. Lastly, probably the downside of not using a bank account is that you will not be able to have legacy integration with a financial ecosystem. So if you want to offer a wallet that have USD integration, like maybe Strike have, you will really need a bank account. All right. Um, so the demo we are going through, Arvin is going through is so an implementation of the gallery stack where, so it's a custodial wallet where we offer both USD and BTC wallets over Lightning. We use derivative in this demo. So it's really the third construct that I mentioned. We rely on an exchange called OKX for the derivative. Um, that said, you know, even though the, this demo uses USD, uh, strategic USD over derivative, it would be straightforward to to do a demo with USD or USDT also. The, the, the dealer, so there is a part that is converting the dollar to Bitcoin and vice versa will need to be different though. Um, and so we have a tutorial that uh, Arvin will go through. We, if you want to try it out, we can give you uh, an access token that with a pool of wallet with five dollars and five thousand sets. The, and so you can you know, go back and forth between those two wallets or send the, from the USD wallet to another wallet and, 
uh, try how the API works. Uh, everything in the demo that we have today is open source, and so you could deploy your own wallet if you wanted to. As you mentioned, yes, there are. Um, like we're in this transitionary um, phase right now, with like until we get to this like hyper Bitcoinization that everyone hopes for. But in the meantime, yeah, people still need to buy um, their bread and stuff with um, with some dirty fiat, and um, yep. well, <laughs> you know, um, uh, 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 as the market and the uh, um, industry continues to evolve. Um, hopefully, uh, we don't need that, that anymore and everything could be priced in sets, but I don't know the um, economics and stuff uh, 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 about how these things work, but um, it definitely seems to like uh, something that's fill, filling a need right now. And um, yeah, thanks um, thanks so much for um, your work in the space as well. Um, uh, we didn't really do we didn't really do an intro um, on Nicholas, but um, uh, Nicholas is the founder of Galoy, and um, or one of the co-founders on Galoy, and um, uh, they started off with this um, uh, Bitcoin Beach wallet in this tiny um, tiny uh, village in El Salvador, um, where there wasn't even an ATM at the time. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, there was no ATM, no Fiat ATM, no Bitcoin ATM. No Bitcoin, nothing. Yeah, and then um, uh, you could read some more about the, um, uh, about the Bitcoin Beach project. It's really awesome. But um, Galoi kind of like um, sprung out of that, uh, didn't it, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, correctly. So Galoi is a, a, a company working on Bitcoin. We do open source. Uh, maybe I can just go back to the... Beginning here on Galloway. So we, we're really a, a Bitcoin company. We develop open source software, uh, mostly software engineer. Uh, so there is a difference between uh, Galloway and the Bitcoin Bitrate. Bitcoin Bitrate was a proof of concept that we did that um, now has become an independent company that is basically promoting the, the use of the Bitcoin Bitrate in the country of El Salvador. Um, but on, on our side, you know, we, we are a software company and we're developing wallet software uh, for any community or any company to use. You, you also kind of like um, promote this idea of like community banking and stuff, right? Um, so I really like how you're seeing the, like a whole bunch of different um, uh, Bitcoin communities all over South America and I think even some in Africa um uh coming up so bitcoin beach was like one of the first one and uh from that the country ended up adopting bitcoin the country of el salvador that's crazy guys the whole country yeah, is yeah. accepting bitcoin like <laughs> like it's like yep that's our currency and um some people say it's not real money by the way but anyway um <laughs> and um and then you have like bitcoin jungle in costa rica i believe yeah bitcoin jungle is a, a an independent community that um as forked our code and know they yeah they, they have a, they are presenting in, they are focusing in Costa Rica. Uh, the wallet is looking pretty much like the Bitcoin Beach wallet, but there is uh, some small difference like the the local currency is um, uh, Costa Rican colon, it's on the dollar. Uh, you know, th there is a map uh, dedicated for merchant adoption that uh, the map is focused on obviously Costa Rica and Salvador. But overall, the, the, the app is, is the same, uh, except those, um, those few differences. Um, are there any other communities which are um, also um, uh, uh, like launching um, uh, from Galois or like, um, uh, I don't know how to say it. Um, yeah, any other um, companies that, um, sorry, communities that are um, utilizing the code base um, in this kind of like organic form? So there are many community working on it, but to my knowledge, none have launched beyond mm. those two. Uh, there is some in Brazil, there is some in in, um, in South Africa. Guatemala, um, I think is saw one. Bitcoin Lake. There, there, there is one in Guatemala. Mm. The, I guess the challenge today is that uh, the Developing, uh, deploying the stack is uh, requires some some expertise in Kubernetes and Helm, and Terraform, and so we, we try to make it easier uh, for anyone to to 
to deploy. Um, you know, maybe a good example would be BTCP server is, is I think, really easy for anyone to deploy today. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not the case for us, but also our stack is is a bit more complex because it's a microservice architecture, and the um, the, the idea is that you know we can have fifty thousand or hundred thousand people using the web at the same time, so it, it's really meant for scale. We are trying to make it easier to deploy locally for smaller community, uh, so maybe with yeah lo lower barrier to entry uh, because we, we think that if we want more and more local community to run our, our software, we need to to make it easier, right? And we will start the approach by having something that is highly redundant, highly scalable, and from here now we try to think about how, how to make it easier to for small community to, to deploy uh, on their own. So we there is still some work before we get there, but uh, it's something we, we, we actively work on. Uh, so Stelios Ramos asks, uh, curious, what are the KYC needs for the derivative options, if any? Uh, I believe for OKX, you can use the exchange without KYC up to some threshold that I don't know what they are, but maybe it's one Bitcoin or one Bitcoin per day or something like that. Um, so, yeah, you, you can use it as a proof of concept. You can use it. Um, you, you don't need to, uh, to KYC. Um, of course, if you want to have high amount, uh, you may want to do it. Um, um, about the um, deploying stuff, um, uh, we were speaking with um, uh, this guy, Jay Deluxe. I don't know if you know him. Um, uh, he's attending, um, the hackathon and he met him in, um, in El Salvador actually. And he was talking about uh, like these really low powered devices that you're able to kind of like run your node on. And even, I think he said, um, even services like LN bits or something, um, or LN URL could run on it through, um, to get access through HTTP. Do you think, um, some of these services, um, uh, like um like the Galois stack and stuff um eventually would be able to run in such um uh kind of like local um hardware yes we're, we're working with uh, open arms which is one of the lead developer of the wasp bit to try to bring the Galois stack to low on device like a raspberry pi um whether you want to run you know our stack on a raspberry pi or not for a community is a question i i don't think that necessarily is um it's the best option because it's one thing if you are trying to get a Raspberry Pi, you know, for your own uh, um, your own benefits, and or maybe if you have the Uncle Jim model where you have, you know, three or five people you you know you want to help. Um, but if you want to have hundred or thousand of people, maybe a, a Raspberry Pi is not the, the best system because you you typically want something like Red, uh, you know. Um, uh, to to make sure like it, statistically one of the hardware that you will put to your computer over the last of over the time span or maybe two or three years it will at some point work um, if you are storing the balance of hundred or thousand of, of people in your community you don't even if you do backup every day like that's not enough because then you know, all the transactions that will happen since the last backup will be would be lost and so we're thinking about ways to uh, have uh, low cost um, opportunity to store the balance the the you know the, the new balance for every user after every transaction so that if one hardware is failing you can still uh, recover the most obvious option is to have a what's called a red so you have two discs in parallel and if you have red one like you uh, one hardware can fail, you know, the other can uh, as, as still of the data. And that might be some better option for uh, deploying our stack than a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but maybe there is some other option where every transaction after it's been settled is being stored maybe on the cloud somewhere. So you can, you could still uh, run your, you know, your, your full stack on your own machine, but you want to have uh, at every time a, a backup in the cloud. Is the USD functionality already um, available? Um, sorry, the US, yeah, the USD functionality is already available in the API. Yes, it's available in the API. Uh, it's not activated yet on the Bitcoin Beach Wallet, but it's activated on another cluster, which we call Freecorn. Um, 
I mean, maybe you can take over from here. And so basically the, the workshop that we're doing here, the idea is that anyone here can use it and try it. Uh, it it's, uh, but it's not a bit community related, it's a different cluster we set up for this event.